Hey guys, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Good morning. Happy Sunday. I pray that you guys had a very, very great weekend. You guys, we're about to have a really great talk this morning. So on this morning, you guys, I am going to be breaking down like four things y'all can do before placing trades this week. I know we're going into a new week. There's a lot going on in all the markets such as cryptocurrency, such as the forex market, stocks and all that, right? But it's just on my heart this week to just really break down like key things that need to be known, that need to be said and heard before, you know, you get on your price charts this week because one of the things that I keep getting in my DM or one of the questions I keep getting in my e in my email or even on YouTube is um, you know, how do you accurately place a trade? Like that's one of the things I keep getting asked. And anytime I get asked that question, um, it can primarily let me know. Let me put my headphones in, you guys, so y'all can hear me better. Put my headphones in really quick. You guys can hear me really well. But when I get asked that question, like Shaquan, how do you how do you accurately enter a trade? How do you know where to enter, where to place your take profit, where to place your stop loss? What it really boils down to is me understanding and seeing that um, the student or the person who's asking that question just may not have an accurate trade setup. Like they may not have that go-to setup that tells them this is how they enter the market, this is what they're looking for in a step-by-step -step order. So I'm gonna be breaking down this morning, you guys, with you, like the four things you can do before taking a trade. And I'm even have like um, a few uh, charts on here that you guys are gonna look at me with, look at with, with me this morning. We're gonna look at the dollar index. We're gonna look at euros, USD, and we're gonna look at USD Swiss for a really, really great reason. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it now. Um, one of the things that I get asked as well is how do you pick the best currency pairs to trade? Oh, that is like almost popular question that I get. So I am gonna break that down. I'm gonna break down the setup that I trade each and every week and the setup that I teach my students each and every week, how I scout for pairs based on currency-based groups, such as the Australian dollars, the euros, the pounds, the CADs, the Swiss, the New Zealanders, and the United States dollars. And if a currency pair is nearing an entry point or is at my entry point, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I do from there and how I flag the best currency pairs out of each subgroup. So before we get started, you guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shaquan. I am the trading educator at SLFX Trading. That is my baby, my coaching company. I've been teaching for three years. I've been trading for five years and I teach people how to have 15 minute trading days by swing trading from higher time frames. I get people who may not have time on their price charts or who've been struggling on their price charts and they're ready to try something different. Day trading isn't working scalping isn't working support and resistance isn't working and they know that there is a better way to trading they know there's a simplified version and i give people that simplified version so depending on how people learn how to trade with me they can learn how to trade as quick as six weeks and as high as 12 weeks on their own by themselves taking their own trade setups and that is what i love teaching how people how to do each and every week in the market i walk them step by step by step and guide them myself uh so one of the things that i love to do um especially when i'm even preparing people to take a trade every single week is i say hey you guys there are things we have to do when we come together right so i have chart and chill sessions every single sunday like i'm gonna have one today at 5 30 p.m eastern standard time and i call it chart and chill because I don't like anything too streamlined where it's just me showing my price chart. Like each student who shows up to analyze charts with me, they have to come prepared. They have to come with their price charts analyzed. And the reason being is because I'm not the type of person or I don't have the type of community where people just sit on the sidelines and they never participate. Even if they're new, or even if you're new and you need a trading community, I'm not asking anyone to come in perfect. I'm not asking anyone to come in knowing it all. But when we come together to analyze as a group, I do need to see through your eyes. What do you need help with? What are you seeing? And I think that's a disconnection with people because 
when they get into trading groups, they're looking at other people's price charts and what other people are doing, but no one really taught them how to see it for themselves. And so in order for me to really help someone streamline what they see, I'm like, yo, just give me your eyes. Show me what's on your chart and I'll critique it with you as we analyze it. It's nothing too streamlined like, yo, okay, well, you can do this, this, and this, fix this, this, and this really quick and look at it this way and then the aha moments happen there. So that's why I like chart and chills because I'm able to groom the trader. You just got to let me know what you see, not to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm the best trader. No, you can come in brand new only knowing one thing and I groom you from there, right? So even if that's you and you've been struggling or you feel like you've got it, you just want a good community or you feel like you're at that break even point where you know something, but there are missing steps, you guys. I'm still gonna give y'all like these four great tips really quick this morning on how what you need to do to analyze your price charts, like what's required, right? So first thing first, you guys, is you wanna only seek to trade your best setup right like that's first thing first the go-to setup my go-to setup that i teach every single week is called tmp we focus on the trend if you've been following me on instagram or youtube that is like the main thing that i cover first and foremost is the trend and we're only seeking trend trading setups on every currency pair that we're trading and if the currency pair is not trending we don't focus on it right and the reason why we only focus on one technique is because if you focus on too many techniques as a group, it leads to confusion. Like how many of you have ever been in a group where this person is looking at support and resistance, this person is looking at trend line, this person is looking at an advanced pattern, this person is looking at Fibonacci, like this person is a swing trader, this person is a day trader, this person is a scalper. It's all everywhere. You don't get a good handle. So for us to stay on one accord, what we do is we trade one sound technique that everyone can follow right that's what i love doing in my group and when we do that what happens is if it if we see something that doesn't fit the technique all of us as a group we can say okay yeah we're just gonna bypass this one or yeah we're just gonna ignore this one but when we see that one that fits is confirmation because how many people or how many of you guys now go to youtube or instagram or facebook just to see if it's a confirmed trade that someone else is trading with you are they trading in the same direction as you are they trading the same currency pair that you're trading why do you think you're doing that you're doing that because you want to know that you're not going to be alone in a potential trade that you want to take right so the more eyes that's on the same exact thing it leads to least confusion and you feel like okay we're gonna make money together as a group or even if it goes the opposite way sometimes and, and this is psychology how many of you have like ever lost a trade and you felt like you were alone right like dang i was alone but what happens when you know someone else lost the same trade you kind of won't feel as bad and that really is psychology because no one wants to feel like the outsider in anything that they do right and so that's one of the things that we personally focus on it's just one technique right and if anyone does come in with trading other techniques that's fine i'm not you know I, i'm not against that but it is known you still have to trade the same technique and it's only just three rules that have to be met to enter a trade it's not changing anything that you do it's not adding or taking away from anything you're doing as a matter of fact it's actually simplifying what you do when you learn the three rules right so that's the first thing that we do so if you're sitting here saying which well, what's the first thing i need when i'm analyzing a chart or what's the first thing i need to know before i take a trade it's your technique it's your rules nothing is separated outside of that everything comes together with your rules right so when i come to that price chart i need to already know this is my system these are my rules i'm looking for currency pairs that fit that and if they don't they're going to weed themselves out right now the beginning phase and this is going to be part two is what do you look at or the second tip, what do you look at when it comes down to you analyzing a price chart to take a trade? You want to look at the trend, right? No one goes anywhere without a direction. No one goes anywhere without the final destination in their mind. The trend is the destination, right? So what happens is 
when we're when we're looking at the trend we're saying okay we need to find currency pairs that's showing a clear sign of an uptrend or a clear sign of a downtrend right and that is when price is actually either fluctuating overall up or fluctuating overall down right that's one of the first things that we're going to look at right because it helps with weeding out currency pairs it's going to cause confusion and it's going to help us not overanalyze like how many of you guys overanalyze one currency pair or how many of you guys ever felt confused on one currency pair and you're so focused on that pair that you're hoping that it changes throughout the week and it doesn't end up changing throughout the week and what happens is what you did was you actually ended up putting too much energy into a dead currency pair when there are dozens and dozens over maybe over a hundred currency pairs or something else in the market that you could have traded so you basically traded dead energy and time and got nothing in return right and so what we do is we say no we need a clear path and i want you guys to think about driving on a road right would you if, if you know a road is congested or has too many highways what do you do on that road? What you do is you say, okay, I know I don't want to go this way. I know I don't want to go that way because your objective is to find the fastest route or at least the least congested streets so that you can get to that final destination. And if I know a pair is trending up, I can say I'm the buyer. I see clear signs of an uptrend. If I know that a pair is trending down, I can say, okay, I see a clear sign of a downtrend. And now it makes me even more confident when I place a trade. Because if you start trading a pair that is consolidating and you have no idea where it's going and then you feel like you need support and resistance, you need all these things to figure out a pair, more times than not, you're either going to get stopped out of that currency pair or it's going to lead to a lot of confusion or you could be holding a trade for far longer than what you want to hold the trade for. So that's one of the things that we don't want to do, right? And I'll show you guys a really great example. Like I have a chart up here right now. This is the dollar index, ticker symbol DXY. And what this ticker symbol does or what this index does, this indice does, it shows you the strength or the weakness of the dollar, right? Because if you're trading a major currency pair, you want to be looking at the dollar index. And this is one of the first things that we start off with in our trading group. We start with the dollar index because I need to know overall, is the dollar strong or is the dollar weak because it's what's affecting my majors, right? Our majors are the Australian dollar versus the United States dollar, the Euro versus the United States dollar, the pound versus the United States dollar, New Zealand dollar versus the United States dollar. Then you have the United States dollar versus the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, and the Switzerland franc, right? So if this index can help lead me or guide me into a trade based on its design, then guess what? I'm going to look at its trend. So I want you guys to see what's going on on the dollar index, and I'm going to read this out loud. And I even have it plant planted on here for y'all. The last low that we have was at $89.19. The last lower high that we had was at $94.738, right? Or you could say around 74, not 72, just depending on how you look at it. It was on your chart, okay? Now, what I'm noticing is that because price went low, like we had a high exchange rate and then we had a low exchange rate, what I'm looking at is the fact that, okay, well, now where we're at in the market, we've had a full consecutive month or the last four weeks of bearish movement, right? We got a lot of bearish movement. And because of that, it's making me think, okay, well, the dollar may continue to be weak. The dollar may continue to lose strength because we've had four consecutive weeks of bearish momentum. We've not been able to top back up around $94, right? Or $94.72. And so as I'm looking at that, it's going to make me go to my major currency pairs and say, out of these pairs, if the dollar is weak, out of the United States dollar, the United States JPY, which is, which is the Japanese yen, or United States Swiss franc, 
which one of these currency pairs is continuing the weakness so I can focus on that? Are these pairs showing clear downtrends right now because the dollar index is? And I'm on a weekly time frame on this, right? But then it's gonna make me look at my other currency pairs that move opposite of the dollar index, such as Euro USD, New Zealand dollar USD, Pound USD, um and and what was another uh australian dollar usd right it's gonna make me think well if those are going down then which ones are going up for the other majors right and so this is going to be a really great question but now i need to show a clear uptrend the pairs is going to move oppositely right so now with that being said once I find which ones are trending my direction that I need to go that I feel confident in, it's going to lead me to tip number three for you guys, which is going to be you have to locate your entries, right? Once you see which ones are trending. So I'm going to move over to another chart so you guys can see um, what it is that I am looking at, okay? So I'm going to move over to Euro USD. all right? Y'all have y'all see EURUSD um, in my top screen across from me. And so this is Euro, Euro USD. This is what's going on on this price chart. And how we locate if price is trending up or down, you guys, is based on the exchange rates. Because you guys, that's what we trade in this market. Now I know a lot of times when you guys are learning, people say to plot your structures first. Support and resistance, supply and demand, like whatever it is people tell you to trade or plot. What I'm going to tell you guys is to find your most important exchange rates at highs and lows first because the numbers that are increasing they're telling you guys that the buyers are in the market the numbers that are decreasing they're telling you that the sellers are in the market and once you understand who's in the market you trade alongside with them it's easier to find your targets at that point of where you want to enter the trade so here's a really great example right and i'm going to call these numbers out for you guys the higher high for Euro USD recently was around a dollar twenty. The last low that we're pushing up from the higher low was at a dollar nineteen nines. And what that lets me know is that there's a high demand for the euro over the United States dollar. That people are actually buying the euro right now. And so what I want to do is find the best area where I can trade from. Now this is a very tight range. I want you guys to know that because. Between the last high and between the last low, it's approximately around 88 pips. And so if price pulls back, it's not going to have a steep pullback. It doesn't have that much to travel below that uh, ret into retrace, right? And because it doesn't have a lot to retrace, this could be a really good setup for my day traders, right? Because you have to look at the gaps in between your numbers as well, too. How far can price pull back? Because I don't want to take a buy right here. I don't. Because I don't know if Sunday opening or if Monday or Tuesday, I don't know if price will just significantly just keep increasing because we have a lot of high momentum right now, right? But all I know is if the dollar continues to drop, what ends up happening is Euro USD will actually continue to go to the upside because they correlate oppositely, right? Because if you think about it, the dollar index, ticker symbol DXY, it's the strength and the weakness of the United States dollar. Euro USD, USD stands for United States dollar, which means that it, it which means if you think about it, if the dollar goes weaker, which is actually dropping, this is why Euro USD has been going back up to the upside, right? And so now I'm thinking if it continues to drop, then Euro USD can continue to continue to the upside, and the exchange rates will continue to flow, and they're showing evidence of that right now. So I don't want to trade against that, right? And so what I'm looking for is to see if price can continue to pull back from me, I would say at least between the exchange rates of $1.2698 to $1.2352, as long as it can stay above $1.19939, we can continue to see bullish momentum right not going to think about a sell until price can pass that last higher low not going to have a sell in my mind because what we need is for price to pull back at the moment so we can continue to be buyers right because we want to buy now at a discounted price or well, price is right now at a dollar 2986 and it just literally on friday passed the higher high at a dollar 2817 this is showing us hey buyers we're here 
But as a buyer, I need a discount. So when price pulls back and it can show bullish information, that confirms it's time to be the buyer, right? Now, some of you guys' charts could look different. You could trade something opposite of me. I trade my estimation zones. It's just where I'm estimating price will come back to. That's it. It's not based on anything extravagant. It's not based on a higher high at, in this example. It's actually based on my higher low, right? I just need price to stay above 1.19939. Show me bullish information and I'll become the buyer. If I don't do that, if price doesn't do that, then I sit on my hands. I'll let, the, I'll let this pair weed itself out as a good setup to take or a bad setup to take. But once it shows me it's good, I'm going to enter win or lose. Once it shows me it's bad, which means it doesn't fit my three rules because it's actually meaning one, I just see it's trending. But once my other two rules are met, then yes, I can take the trade setup and not have to second guess it, right? And that's the thing. Once you locate the entry, it's easier to take trades from there. It's easier, right? Because you now you're going to feel more strongly about your trading decision right and then what happens is how many of you have ever been emotional when you enter a trade so i believe the more emotional you are your trade setup is you don't feel a hundred percent about it you don't feel you don't even feel 90 percent about it you're second guessing everything that you're doing because you don't trust your analysis and you don't trust yourself right and so to take out emotions that is why, you know, I say, okay, well, let me follow my rules. I'll follow my rules, right? So we'll see how it goes. If it's that once again, if it stays above a dollar nineteen three nine, you buy. And if it doesn't, guess what? You don't have to take the setup. That's how you're able to weed trades out. Okay. And then lastly, but last, you guys, it's going to be number four, right? X in a trade where price is required to. And that's either by your stop loss or your take profit. Now, before I get into that, um, where your take profit could go and where your, your stop loss could go, let me say this. Always make sure your personal rules are being met. It does not matter what anyone else says. It does not matter what anyone else thinks. Your currency pair that you trade is your currency pair always based on your own eyes. Because I'm pretty sure in life, you've heard someone say something, you've seen someone say something, even I'm telling you something. By the end of the day, your money is your money. And only you know how much you're going to make. You know how much you're okay with losing. But at the end of the day, you have to feel confident with taking that position. Okay? So for me personally, you guys, here's, another, here's something I want to say, say as well with your take profits. If you don't know where you're going to exit the trade for a take profit, don't take the trade. Don't take the setup, okay? Like, for example, I don't know how high this thing is going to run. I honestly do not know. This is a swing trading setup for me because I'm a swing trader. I'm not looking to day trade. I'm not looking to scalp this market. I'm looking at one high time frame. I'm going between the weekly and the daily for my entry. And if my daily does not give me that entry, for me personally, I'm not going to take the trade. You may be a person who's going to take the trade because you may be on a, on a lower time frame and it will fit your setup. But once I see price pull back for me to come back into my zone, then I will have a take profit. But for now, I don't have one, so I'm on my hands on this pair. And that's another thing that you can do when you're deciding if you're going to take a trade or not. Know if you have a setup know where you're going to enter the trade and know where you're going to place your take profit because you guys you can't even even you can't even place a stop loss until you're in the trade you can't so i don't even have a stop loss at this point because i'm not in the trade it's not giving me a confirmed entry so i'm on my hands but i do see it as a potential setup this week if price can pull back for me right so i'm speaking everything that i want to do into existence because it could be close this week for giving me an entry and this is how you get to weed things out if price is not close to giving you an entry it's not close to giving you your your, your setup it's not close to where you want to enter a trade you don't have to look at that pair you don't have to force the trade okay so with this one for me personally I'm on my hands. If I see something, I'll probably update you guys here on YouTube or somewhere here on Instagram. Maybe my stories or a post, right? But I have another one that I want to show you guys as well. So let me bring up another one. 
and this other one you guys is going to be usd swiss now there's always a method to my madness why i do what i do you guys so we just looked at the dollar index euro usd now we're looking at usd swiss one of the reasons why we're looking at these three we're looking at the index we're looking at two currency pairs is because the united states dollar versus the swiss and then euro versus usd they actually move oppositely of one another so if i'm looking to buy said euro usd i am going to look to sell said usd swiss now does that mean that i'm going to do this at the same exact time no and sometimes they will line up that way right but one of the reasons why i'm going to say no is because usd swiss is not euro usd they still have to meet the setup. They still have to meet my rules. Like last week, if I was day trading or scalping on a lower time frame, Euro USD was great for a potential buy. But from my setup on USD Swiss, price did not pull back enough. I think it was off by like 10 pips. It did not pull back enough for me to be able to enter a trade. However, it could this week if all the rules are met. And it gives me my entry on a daily time frame because I'm not dropping down to the four hour. I'm not dropping down to the one hour. I do everything from the daily time frame. So we'll see. But I want you guys to look at what I'm about to do, okay? I'm about to speak my setup, my trend, where I want to enter the trade, where I want to exit the trade if it gives me that option. So I take the same setup. I do the same thing. My students are doing the same thing. That's how we're able to analyze charts really quickly. And we have 15 minute trading days because of this. There's no need for us to sit on our charts and watch this, right? So watch how I do this. Now, at one point in time, the last lower low was at 0.91289. From there, price went up to 0.91966, right? Or where the last lower high is around that area. I think my numbers are up on the chart on, on this, but... The last, I'm sorry, the last higher low, there it is. The last lower high was 92461. Price decreased to 0.91289. Then price went back up to 0.91966, which is that last, uh, is the last price table tools you guys see on my chart. And now price has dropped. And guess what it did, you guys? When price dropped, it passed 0.91289 and it went lower, literally two, two pips lower to 0.91269. And what that lets us know is that demand is low. There are not a lot of people buying the United States dollar. So what that lets me know is I am the seller. I need to sell because the exchange rates keep decreasing. But I don't want to sell right here. What I want to do is I want to wait for price to pull back to prove and show me that it can stay below 0.91966. Now, I do not want price to touch that number because you guys, anytime that price is trending, when you call out a number for your lower highs or your higher lows, you do not want price to touch those numbers because if it passes those numbers, that means that price is reversing. It's reversing. It's going the opposite direction. But if it's trending, like say in this case, I need it to stay below that rejection candle, that green rejection candle where my last price label tool is at 0.91966, I need to come back there, right? And if it comes back there and shows me or gives me evidence of bearish information, because this is the area I want to enter a trade, then I am the seller. I sell from there. And wherever price just pulled back from, I trade back down to for my take profit. You guys, that is it. That's the setup. Do y'all see how quick that was? I don't have to drop down in time frames to find what I'm looking for. I don't need to drop down to the four hour because the four hour will confirm what I just said. The one hour will confirm what I just said. The 30, the 15 minute, the five minute, the one minute. I hope whoever that fire truck is for that they're safe, but that's going to confirm it because all time frames work together right and so i'm speaking everything that i'm doing now another key piece of this is every every last one of you here may be swinging traders like i am or you guys may be day traders or some of you guys may even be scalpers but how long you guys hold the position for is literally going to be up to you for me how i teach swinging traders i let them know that you guys it's okay to 
hold the trade. It's okay to wait for a few days for price to set up because we're not just focused on one currency pair. Because if we only focus on one currency pair, we may not have trades for days, for weeks, especially as swing traders, even for months. So we have to have more than one currency pair. But what I just did, you guys, is called correlating pairs. I correlated Euro USD and I correlated USD Swiss. I'm telling you guys now that they move oppositely of one another, right? More than 90% of the time, which means if Euro USD is going up, United States dollar is going down. But how do I know that? Because I looked at the dollar index, ticker symbol DXY, where I can get this information from. And you guys, fun fact, these are the first with the indice and euro and euro usd usd swiss these are the first three price charts that we tackle in the swing trading society why because it sets the tone for the group one of the beautiful parts about it is i'll show the dollar index and then i give it off to my students i hand it off after that i'm not showing my price charts unless i have to because i want my students to show their charts i want to be able to critique them from the sideline or applaud them when they do well because that means i'm teaching them greatly and what ends up happening is more students come forward and they're like oh we can share whoa, whoa you mean we can talk oh you mean you're gonna talk to us yes we can talk to each other yes converse over the price charts if he, if one person sees this another person sees this they add value but then what happens when someone else may not see it and they may see differently now it's up to the students in the group to converse and learn from one another I'm there to coach and to guide. I have coaching moments where I feel like, man, this student just taught me something. And then I have teaching moments where the students feel like, man, even though this is an analysis session, we're still getting taught teaching moments as we go along on our price charts. So now they feel even more pumped. They learn something new. They can implement it. They can back test it throughout the week, right? And so this is why coming to your charts before the market opens, taking, depending on how many currency pairs you trade, if you trade less than five currency pairs, honestly, your analysis should really take less than 30 minutes. If you're trading, let's say, 10 to 15 pairs, 45 minutes, anything over the net could be an hour, maybe two hours. It just depends on what you're trading and what you're doing. But see, for us, we stay to the left. We don't really have to go to the right. For us, it's not a look left structure leaves clues type of thing. For us, it's more of what currency pairs are trending, where we don't want price to go if it's trending, where we do need price to go for our entry, and where's our take profit. That's about it. Because once you keep it that simple you're, and you're trading the same technique, you get to weed out the pairs that aren't meshing well with you for that week. And you get to focus on the best setups, okay? So you guys, either way, this is all I want to talk about today, and I hope you guys take these four tips into account. And so if you didn't get the four tips, you guys, it was number one, know the technique that you're trading once you get on that price chart. Do not come to the price chart blind, okay? Number two was find what's trending and trade with the trend. Don't trade against it unless you're saying you're a counter trend trader. But if you are a trend trader, have confidence in the direction and trade with the direction. And the third thing was locate your entries. And once, the, once you locate those entries based off the trend in your technique, then you want to locate where you're going to exit the trade. And that is going to be your take. That's going to be your, your take profit, your stop loss, right? So once you get those four things, you guys, write it down, journal it down, do what you have to do to keep up with it okay and so what i'm gonna do y'all i'm probably gonna end up doing a full youtube video on this um basically the pairs that i just showed you the pairs that i looked at and if it's not these pairs by tomorrow because i never know how the market is gonna move tomorrow then if i see other currency pairs that fit that may have better potential i'm gonna put those out on youtube and i'm also gonna put them out on instagram okay so i pray you guys have a very great trading week if you want to work with me and learn how i trade this technique and even be involved in our chart and chill sessions make sure you guys click the link in my bio to join the swing trading society we are still in open enrollment season or if you want to work with me one-on-one or figure out which is best for you to do you can even book a free 30-minute discovery call with me okay so i pray you guys have a safe 
trading week and i will talk to you all later you guys be blessed